We begin with the fallout from the president and Mitt Romney going flub for flub with remarks on the economy and how to fix it. And while the president is facing a Republican pylon after his uncharacteristic gaffe saying that the private sector is doing fine, Democrats are pouncing on Mitt Romney's rather more substantial response, which involves an actual matter of policy. He wants to hire more government workers. He says we need more firemen, more policemen, more teachers. Did he not get the message of Wisconsin? The American people did. It's time for us to cut back on government and help the American people. Right, because teachers, firefighters and police officers aren't part of the American people. They're just some socialist hangers-on taking taxpayers' money. Indeed, even Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker had to scratch his head at Romney's invocation of his own state. I know in my state our reforms allowed us to protect firefighters, uh, police officers and teachers. Uh, that's not what I think when I think of big government. But if fellow Republicans were scratching their heads, the remark was enough to make senior Obama ad adviser David Axelrod question Mitt Romney's very status as an earthling. We don't need any more teachers. 250,000 teachers have lost their jobs uh, in the last couple of years. What planet is he living on where he thinks that we, that we can take these kind of hits in our education system me... and, and, and progress as a country? I would suggest he's living on a different planet if he thinks that's a prescription for a stronger economy. And a very different planet. The Romneytron, perhaps? Never. No, he's just coming from a place like Massachusetts, where he saw fit to enact those very cuts he's talking about, as illustrated in a new Obama ad. Local government was cut dramatically. We lost police, firefighter, teachers at rapid rates, people that directly impacted the lives of every citizen. Our cities were less safe, not as clean, larger class sizes. Right, and Romney is the same guy who suggested that the impact of class size is a myth on a visit to a charter school in West Philadelphia. And since that urban excursion was marred by hecklers, we're guessing that West Philly won't be on the map for Romney's newly announced bus tour. No West Philly probably won't count in the Every Town Counts tour as the Romno bus rolls through small towns in six swing states. Starting in New Hampshire on Friday, who knows, maybe Sarah Palin will show up just like she did last year when Romney announced his campaign. We cannot wait. Let's bring in our political panel now in Minneapolis, Anna Marie Cox, correspondent for The Guardian. In Washington, MSNBC political analyst and former DNC communications director Karen Finney, who's now a columnist for The Hill. And in Philadelphia, Professor James Peterson, director of Africana Studies at Lehigh University and a blogger for The Huffington Post. Karen, we know that this election is being fought between those who believe government should be reduced and those who think the government does have a role. But isn't Mitt Romney also revealing that he has little understanding for schools and teachers because he has no experience of public education? He went to an elite <laughs> private school where class sizes were small. I mean, that's what yeah. he knows. He knows nothing about public education. Well, that's right. But I think what we're also seeing is that Mitt Romney doesn't, ha doesn't really understand how the economy isn't working for the majority of Americans and how government is supposed to work, right? I mean, but remember, this is a guy who thinks self-deportation is an employment strategy, specifically with regard to, <laughs> <laughs> specifically with regard to, to education. I mean, think about it, Martin. What are some of the things we know? Our kids are falling farther and farther behind. They used to work in education in the New York City public schools. We also know that things like bullying are on the rise. In part why? Because class sizes are getting bigger because of cutbacks in our schools, which means teachers don't have the capacity to take care of students the way they need to be uh, you know, taken care of based on their learning needs. So the idea that cutting more teachers, which means is a good idea. I totally agree with David Axelrod. I don't even want to go to that planet if that's what he thinks <laughs> right. is a good idea. Anna Marie, in, in West Philadelphia, Romney cited McKinsey Consulting uh, <laughs> studies from Asia on the subject of class sizes. I guess that's as close as he can get to public education. And, of course, he asks his wife Anne to advise him on women. <laughs> so that's how it works, is he goes to McKinsey for education and his wife for women's issues. 
But that's as close he gets, as he gets to this planet, I guess. Although my theory has always been that he's an android and not an alien. <laughs> right. um, and, and, <laughs> and I don't know exactly like what happened for him in, in this gaffe when he, he cited you know teachers and firefighters as being part of big government as a problem. Um, it's almost like this Wisconsin victory has been so such a great thing for Republicans that it's like a tick. They just mention it when, whenever they think they need an applause line. Um, a lot of people don't know what the meaning of the Wisconsin victory is. You can't just add it into a speech and hope that you're going to make sense of what you said before. Um, I think that with saying this, you're right. Um, Romney showed it, he's really out of touch with how most people view the government um, and how most people see it as a part of their lives, not as the, the enemy, but as something that you need to have a relationship with in order to proceed, in order to have a good life. Professor Peterson, Anna Marie's right, isn't she? The president has faced an onslaught after saying that the private sector's doing fine. But isn't it much more serious for this Republican nominee to state as his policy that actually he thinks we should reduce these public service employees right. and everything will be fine. It is, it is much more serious. First, when we look historically about how to recover from recessions, the government's got to spend some money. The way that you do that is by hiring public workers. What we've seen because of the Republican takeover in 2010 and the Republican legislatures and governors is that people are balancing the budgets of their states on the backs of public workers. That has been a recipe for disaster. Some estimates say that our unemployment could be as low as 7 percent right now if we hadn't laid off over 600,000 public workers. Now, that doesn't even get to the issues around education, around fighting crime, and the ways in which we prepare for a more robust society overall going forward. And the bottom line here is, not only is Romney sort of out of sort of orbit with, with the planet, but it's actually <laughs> the Republican Party that is pushing an agenda that's trying to erode public services. And that just doesn't make sense. It does not make sense. Karen, when you hear Republicans rehearsing this view, as Professor Peterson yeah. says, do you think the people welcome the idea of fewer teachers, of fewer fewer police officers, of fewer firefighters? I mean, is that really what we are looking for? You know, look, the Republicans have for a very long time now been at war with the idea of public sector employees, which to me, it's public service. I mean, even yep. some of the people who work in the building behind me actually came to Washington, actually work for government because they're trying to do some good. So bashing public sector employees, which, by the way, means fewer cops, you know, on your streets, fewer That's teachers right. in your kids' school. But the one thing I want to take on, though, in terms of what President Obama said, in the full context, he's not wrong. If you look at, and even Moody's has, has suggested that if you look at non-financial firm uh, corporate profits are at their high, up 15 percent, haven't been that high since the 60s. That's so right. technically, and we know they're, they're sitting on over a trillion dollars while middle class wages are stagnating, while people don't have more money in their pockets and these companies aren't hiring. So, you know, again, sort of blaming people who don't have jobs for, for what's going wrong in the economy when the people at the top are doing better than ever in the corporate world and sitting on, you know, over a trillion dollars in cash, that's not an understanding, again, of how the economy actually is supposed to work. OK, well, we've dealt with that issue. Anna-Marie, we're hearing that Romney's going on this magnificent bus tour. <laughs> uh, of course, and as you know, Sarah Palin did the same. Um, what are your thoughts about the purpose of this, whether it will be as effective as Sarah Palin's, which seemed to me like <laughs> a family holiday up the uh, northeast coast of America? As long as he doesn't tie a dog on top of the roof of the bus, I mean, I guess it can't hurt him. Um, but, you know, I, I think that what they're looking for here is really just to put him in front of people who might be friendly to him. A lot of the polls in swing states, as many as like 25, 28 percent of people say they don't know enough about Mitt Romney to have an opinion of him. And that's actually kind of remarkable and a bad sign, when considering like how much coverage the presidential election has gotten so far. And, and I think that this is just an attempt to sort of put him in a friendly atmosphere to, to let him show his human side, or at least show the side that's programmed to be human, um, and, and, and hope for the best. Although, you know, his record in Massachusetts sort of suggests the more you get to know him, the less you like him. Um, but I guess that's a risk they have to take. Indeed. Professor Peterson, there's also this issue out there of a VP pick. And one name that's being floated still is Jeb Bush, who had some harsh words for the Republican Party. And I'm quoting him. He said, back to my dad's time or Ronald Reagan's time, they got a lot of stuff done with a lot of bipartisan support that right. right now would be difficult to imagine happening. That's right. 
Do you I've... see any sign of a pullback from Republicans hearing such a kind of critique by someone as, as influential as Jeb Bush? Well, Jeb Bush is right. He is not going to accept any invitation to be Romney's VP. We may see him down the line in 2016 or 2020, that's for sure. Uh, but he's also absolutely right about this Republican Party. I say this all the time. You know, the Republicans that I grew up with, we could actually have conversations with them. We could talk through some of these issues, and compromise was, was at least on the table. But what has happened with the rise of the 1%, and the ways in which money and special interests dominate politics is that partisanship has actually become something totally different. We're actually at war with ourselves around the legislative processes because special interests overdetermines, and I mean that literally, it overdetermines the ways in which politicians think and vote. And so Jeb Bush is, is, is actually right here. And he, he understands that there's no space in this Republican Party for him, for his father, or for him in the future if they can't relieve that chokehold that special interests have and the 1% has over the Republican party. Karen, do you agree with Professor Peterson that actually it's the money that's now driven this partisanship to such extremes? Absolutely. I mean, those are the voices that are having the most influence. Again, I go back to, uh, you know, writing Shelley Adelson writing a check for Newt Gingrich, yeah. which, you know, completely drowned out the will of Republican primary voters who said, you know what, we don't want this guy. And yet Adelson kept him afloat for, you know, an extra month or so. But, you know, I also think that what Jeb is speaking to, I mean, we've heard privately a lot of Republicans who are more moderate voicing concerns about this idea that somehow compromise has become, you know, a, a dirty word and sort of the grip that the far right uh, has has taken in the Republican Party. I hope that it means that more moderate voices will actually, though, stand up and speak out publicly. Almost immediately, Jeb was attacked by none other than Grover Norquist. So, <laughs> there you, you know, know. <laughs> there you go. Everything that's wrong with politics right now, Mr. Indeed. Grover Norquist. Professor James Peterson, Karen Finney, Anna Marie Cox.